Parasymptoms, game one. A little bit of a nod to a specific series of songs. I think it's familiar to the Dance Dance Revolution players. This chart is littered with some foot switches, some brackets, a little bit of mind dodging, all sorts of varied techniques that go to the little musical players present throughout the track. keeping it clean up to the halfway point. Margins are very thin. The lead can change it basically any time on a yellow perfect. Extremely close game. Jelly Slash holding on to a little bit of lead going into the end there, but just slightly rushes the ending. And unfortunately, knocks the score down low enough that Grady takes it. It is worth noting, Jelly Slash is at 12 perfects, and Grady's at 13th. But each of these windows has several sub judgments within it. So, although Jelly Slash had the lower overall perfect count, the, some of those perfects, especially that ending in which he drifted a little bit towards the early side, were further off base than Grady's timing was in general. Hence the score loss. So Grady takes game one. We go into destiny for game two. Both players being very mindful of their footwork through those long hill freezes. You do not want to get twisted around to the wrong direction. Both players holding a gold combo to the halfway point. Wow. Exceptional work to hit those streams. Jelly Slash picks up the mine. Okay. Absolutely clean from the timing perspective. Grady keeps it just a little cleaner overall. 11 perfect, Jelly Slash is 28. I really think it's that mine hit though that made a significant dent in that score. We saw the mine made the difference earlier in the MCAT Jameson game one. Grady takes the set 2-0. 